What's a secret you won't share with anyone in person, but you are willing to share anonymously? I fall asleep to the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack every night. We want to make everyone aware that if you need help, resources are available. There's our Susidu watch where well-meaning and sympathetic people will try and help, but be aware they aren't trained. The Befrienders Org website is a global list of local suicide help charities. You can use it to find a hotline in your country that you can call or email them for free. They'll speak to you and try and help you without being judgmental. I am a bot. Please. Contact the moderators of our ask reddit. Message composed to equals our ask reddit. If you have any questions or concerns. When I was about 9. I went over to neighbor's house. I would usually go hang out with my adult neighbors because they would let me watch TV and give me snacks in exchange for helping them with the intention of seeing if I could play with the foster puppies she had. Well, she wasn't there, but her door was unlocked and I just went in and played with the puppies. When I walked out of the house, she was coming down the driveway. There was a bunch of stuff in front of her door blocking it from view from the driveway. I just pretending like I had been waiting for a minute and we walked in and I got to play with the puppies again. I've posted this on a different sub. But my wife thinks I go to work 30 minutes early because of my military training. In reality I get there early to watch a rerun of Dog the Bounty Hunter with the what? Pretty sure I'm obsessed with being in a relationship. And I've started finding any woman that talks to me attractive. I used to comb my ass hairs with my sister's styling comb when she would piss me off. I think that I am beginning to hallucinate every once in a while. It's mostly little things that are there. And then they errant. I had a baby when I was 15 and he was adopted. Closed adoption. Most painful thing I've ever gone through. He turns 18 in a few months and if he so chooses. He can find me. I'm married and have kids now. And my kids have no idea he exists. I really, really want to meet him. But I'm terrified he's got mental disorders like his biological father, who is now in prison for murder. Leukemia. CLL. Slowest growing form of leukemia and there's no treatment other than stem cell. And hopefully I won't need that anytime soon dart not even 40 yet. I don't look sick. Even my own family doesn't believe me. So why would anyone else? I guess you need to be frail. Pale. Skinny and bald to have cancer dart right? One time my wife and I got really drunk. The scallops she ate weren't sitting well so she went to sit on the floor of a hot shower. I join her and we are just sitting there hugging and she suddenly pukes all over me. Not too bad as we are in the shower anyway. A little later she has to pee and since neither of us want to move I tell her to just go. So she does. On me. I have a flashlight buried deep in my closet. I haven't used it for years. When I did use it I used to shove it in the opening of a filled laundry bag so I would be ducking something with heft and mass. I had some very lonely times in college and that really really helped me through it. I'm too hesitant to throw it away because I don't want someone to find it. I know the one day I throw it away there will be a freak storm or flood that blows the trash can over and spills it all over the street. Or the garbage bag will rip. Or it will bounce out of the garbage truck and into the street. So it sits in my closet until the day I die and my family is to discover it. My life feels much more normal after reading this thread. I have told my husband. And my mom knows. But nobody else. When I was 7. I pooped the bed in the middle of the night. Just like. A perfect log in my underwear. I was scared of getting in trouble. So I threw my underwear and it behind the dresser in my bedroom and promptly forgot I did that. My mom found it 2 weeks later. Edit. I'm not sure how proud I am for getting gold for my golden log. I'll take it. The real reason my arm is broken is because I now owe a seemingly unobtainable amount of money to the wrong people all because I tried to help my deadbeat brother out of a bad situation. Sartime people. Drugs can ruin not only your life but your family's life as well. Update. I'm still alive and have cut my brother out of the equation. I won't be talking with him or his circle anymore. I am going to disappear for a while and try to rebuild elsewhere. For those who want to help. Seriously. Thank you. I do no deserve a single bit of it. Under advice of an internet stranger. I am not going to stir the pot publicly with more details. But I'm happy to share stories via PMs. I could never commit suicide. 
but I sometimes ponder about how easy it would be to just not have to deal with life. The last two years of my life have been emotionally very difficult. It's gotten a little bit better, but still not where I wish it was. I use homework as a coping mechanism, and I also use it to get out of my house, where I honestly hate spending time. When I get off work, I try to find things to do, just so I don't have to sit there alone. Falling asleep alone, my bed feels so goddamn huge. When I was a kid, I had Sims 2 for PS2. I would make my sim woohoo and let the controller vibrate on my clit. I made my sim continuously woohoo. I was a weird kid. I have four sister, I'm the only guy, and I've banged all their best friends. I don't say anything because I want my sisters to keep bringing friends home. Well my wife knows this now, but I wouldn't tell another soul. A few years ago me and my wife moved into her parents place to save some money, so we were adjusting to living with parents again. It was strange and uncomfortable. I woke up one morning and it felt like the world was about to fall out of my butthole. I went to open the bedroom door and could hear my father-in-law getting ready to head out for work. I'm panicking thinking duck. I know this is gonna be bad. I'm not gonna go take this mega dump so early on into our time living here. I need to devise a plan. I stayed in the bedroom, emptied out the little bin we had in the corner, and it into the bag that was placed in there. I wiped my butt with some tissues that happened to be on the side. Stand up and tie a knot in the bag. Now I'm getting ready for work with this bag of it by my feet. My next stage is to get rid of this thing. I can't do it in any of the bins here. Think duck it I'll take it out and find the nearest one I can see. I even question putting this bag of it in a neighbor's place if nobody sees. I walked 15 minutes to work with a bag of my own crap in my hoodie pocket until I could find a public bin to throw it in. TLDR. I it in a bag and carried it work. Did it with my cousin regularly for a few years till the pregnancy. The first time I had an L6. I wasn't aware that I needed to clean everything out beforehand. It got real messy real quick. I was mortified. I'm the reason my cousin is mentally handicapped. We are the same age. And when we were 7 our grandpa bought dirt bikes for us. Well we decided to make our own trail in the woods. Took the entire summer. I put this tree branch purposely at roughly head level. Just so he could duck under it and it would look awesome. The branch was heavy, but I was able to sit it conveniently between two trees. He was more brave than me, so he went first. Being dumb kids, we didn't wear helmets. I yelled for him to duck, but he didn't and hit his head on the branch. Got knocked backwards and hit his head again straight into the ground. I told everyone it was an accident. Grandpa sold the dirt bikes. I didn't see my cousin a whole lot after that. That was nearly 25 years ago. I see him every Christmas. And it's always the same. In a wheelchair. Being spoon fed by his mom. He can't speak. He likes to draw funny shapes. He most likely doesn't remember the incident. And I don't know if he remembers me. But that's what haunts me. I don't really enjoy living anymore. I'm just going through the motions at this point. I am unintentionally high as duck at work right now. Update. I'm new so I'm not sure how these things work. But I turned 21 last Sunday and so I obviously went out and drank far more than I should have. The next morning I went into work with possibly the largest migraine I've ever had. A few hours went by and finally I broke and asked a co-worker who's known to have anxiety and depression if she had any ibuprofen I could have so I could at least do my job. Well I'm not sure what she gave me but they definitely weren't ibuprofen and once I asked she just said they help with migraine so I took them. There were three identical pills made of powder and they had numbers a dash between them. Anyways I take them and for a little I don't feel anything and then I just start feeling odd. I'm like HM maybe I shouldn't have taken all three but at least the headache is gone and shrug it off. 20 minutes later and all I can do is scroll through reddit and I'm on duck in cloud 9. I was reading the shining before but I had to stop because I realized I read the same page more than 10 times. But then things kind of went downhill. I haven't been at work since Monday because I was randomly drug tested two and a half hours later. They didn't find anything but have decided to suspend me for a week and a half for the suspicion of drug use. I would have responded to everyone much sooner but I didn't really have a great few last days. 
I'm going to put a deadline on my relationship with the man I love for him to fix is it or I'm leaving. I'm going to have this conversation in 5 minutes. Duck my life. Update. Probably not. Guys. Probably not. I don't tell people I'm autistic in person until I've known them multiple years. Sometimes by the time I tell them they're like yeah no offense but I've known for pretty much the whole time I knew you. I sneeze when I'm turned on. I'm always turned on. Everyone in my life thinks I have bad allergies. In reality, I'm think about ducking half the guys in the room. I revealed to a reddit friend fact I am a closet schizophrenic who has had daily conversations for 40 years with my daughter who passed away as an infant. I cannot tell you how liberating it was to finally share something that I couldn't even reveal to my therapist. Now that I am reddit outed I've shared the news with my husband, best friend, and therapist. What did I learn? That they suspected my condition all along. And are unconditionally supportive. I've been offered a threesome with my mate and his GF. Thinking of taking it up. I have cried myself to sleep for years every night. Longest time that I haven't has been 3 nights. I would never say this to her face. But Pam is a wonderful person and a gifted artist. Okay. I'm disappointed in everyone. No one posted their credit card details. I regularly post ads on Craigslist for gangbang meetups. I would be disowned if my very Christian family ever found out. My fiancé is the only person I actually enjoy being around. I don't really say that out loud because it puts unfair pressure on her and exposes my antisocial tendencies. I wasn't always this way. It kind of happened over the past 6 or 7 years after a deep depression and struggle with drugs. I've been happy and drug free for several years. But I haven't been the same. When I make myself hang out with friends, I generally sit there thinking about how long I should stay before I can duck out and go home without looking like an asshole. It's hard for me to have conversations with people because I just think things like when are they going to leave me alone? Or when can I leave? I'm pretty good at hiding it and have several people who consider me to be their friends. But I secretly get no enjoyment out of those relationships. I'm not sure why my fiancé is different. But it makes me very afraid of losing her. I'm almost positive I won't find anyone else that I will be able to love like I do her. There have been a few months here and there in the past where we split up and I went out on dates with several other women. Some of them were very pretty and very nice. But I absolutely hated the entire process and never followed through on subsequent dates. I wish I could change that about myself. But I don't know how. I'm a well adjusted. Normal adult female and I still play Neopets. Or, at least, a Neopets clone. The actual game changed too much for that sweet nostalgia feeling. But I found a game online that's super similar back in college and I've been playing it ever since. Edit, since people seem interested. The site is, Meropets.com. I am a leader at my church, volunteer. Not paid or making a career of it. I used to teach Sunday school. Still occasionally fill in if someone is sick. Went to a Christian college for a bit. Minored in New Testament Greek. Married a Christian girl. Had kids who are growing up in our church. I can no longer bring myself to honestly believe in God. I wish I could. But it just doesn't make any sense. I only maintain the illusion of keeping the faith because it would cause a lot of heartbreak to people who I really care about if they knew. It's like I lost a friend who I had for 34 years. Who I was super close to. Who was always there for me. Who knew me better than anyone else. But I can't mourn this loss. Because my family and close friends still believe this friend is alive and if I tell them I don't believe they'll feel like they lost me. I saw Lebron James D on TV. The only thing that stopped me from suicide is the reminder that my student loans would just pass to my parents if I did. And I don't want to inflict my bills on them or my little bro. E. A. Ro. I wasn't expecting this kind of reaction. Just wanted to share. Thank you all so much. I get 21 days of vacation from my company every year. I split it up by going to Thailand every few months to have a six specifically with ladder boys. I own a 5 foot tall 6 doll while living with two grandmas and my mom. It was interesting ordering the doll and getting this big box weighing 80 pounds into the house with no one noticing. I sat outside waiting for UPS to arrive just so no doorbell was rung. 
had to go through the front door through the hallway then into my room. Somehow I did it with no one seeing. After owning her for about a week it's a real itch trying to keep her clean with people around, so strategizing clean up times in the bathroom sure is a chore. One time I had her in the bathtub to clean up and just took a shower so no one would question. Then I opened the bathroom door to see my grandma waiting to use it. I just had to pray she didn't open the shower curtains while doing her business in which she didn't. So a few months go by. Some family needs to move in. I would now share my room with my brother and his girlfriend temporarily. I hide the doll in a big enough box. Inside my closest. No one knows I have this life size doll and I would rather keep it that way. I feel terribly anxious all of the time and the smallest thing sets me into a panic. I feel paralyzed and scared. I don't know how to put it. It's like a mounting feeling of dread. I am in therapy but it isn't helping. Edit. I am so overwhelmed by this positive response. I've gotten a lot of comments and PMs reassuring me it's going to be okay. Giving me advice. Or just offering to be an ear for me. I've gotten a lot of comments about changing therapists. I actually really like my therapist. But I haven't talked to her about my anxiety per se. I began going to her because I found myself disgusting. And I was deeply ashamed of who I was. It is difficult to articulate. But I have a lot of self-loathing. And I knew that it was totally irrational. But the shame was still there. Whenever I ate sweets. I imagined my stomach ballooning into a ball of fat and my cheeks get puffy with soft flesh. Whenever I made a joke that fell flat, I could feel the contempt radiating off the other people in the room. Whenever I took an extra Oreo, danced awkwardly, or failed an exam, I thought I could see the disgust in everyone's eyes and the sneers on everyone's lips. I thought that I wasn't a real person. I was only good enough to use as a large paperweight, a boat anchor, or a talking garbage disposal. Eating everything in sight and making obnoxious and stupid comments. And to top it off, I was ashamed of being ashamed. Because I knew that my shame was irrational. And this irrational fixation was embarrassing me. I wanted to punish myself to absolve myself of this shame. I fantasize about drilling holes into my legs. I've been making progress on some of this stuff. I don't hate myself as much. And we've found out that a lot of the issues I have stem from abusive parenting and loneliness. I wasn't a very social kid, was bullied and ostracized a bit. I didn't have any friends. And I think that took a toll on me. Because of that, I became desperate for people to see and love me. And that is where the fear started I think. But for some reason, I didn't link the tightness in my chest and my sense of panic to anxiety. I also didn't link my self-loathing and panic together. I think that the anxiety comes from a pressure to be someone who is loved and respected. And the self-loathing comes when I have failed to live up to my, or other people's, expectations. I think this is why therapy hasn't been helping me the way it could. While I could articulate why self-hate, I didn't know that the anxiety was at the root of it. So I could learn to love myself and get over my shame for a little bit. But those intrusive and panicky thoughts, that fear, would always wiggle its way back into my brain and I would be back to square one. Confronting my shame didn't mean that I was confronting my fear, if this makes any sense. And finally, my feelings of fear was never a condition to me. It was who I am. Being anxious was the default. It was normal. But I have recently realized that doing class walk shouldn't make me anxious to the point of tears. I shouldn't cry every time I take a test. And pacing back and forth in the dorm basements at 2am because I am too scared to start my OHM homework is not normal. I made this post because now that I knew about it, how would I explain it? How could I talk about this in a way that doesn't make me look crazy or weak? I am so glad that none of you called me weak. I hope that gives you a bit of perspective on why and how it is difficult to articulate this to myself. I think I have a lot more internalized issues to work out than I thought I did. And I will be talking to my therapist about medication. Thank you all so much again for listening to me and for your advice. I know I rambled a bit in this edit, but I felt that I owed you all an explanation. I probably won't be able to respond to all of the comments, but I have read every one. Ate a huge sub at Subway. On my way out I let out a massive fart. I then drove to a gas station. I got out of my car and some old lady quickly parks her car behind me and angrily slams her car door. Comes up to my face and starts screaming just who do you think you are? Farting in my face like that. 
You're lucky I didn't cause the cops on you. She writes down my license plate number and drives off fast. I stood there confused for like 5 minutes. I never told this to anyone. I don't really want to be with my girlfriend romantically, but she's my best friend, and I don't want to lose her from my life, so I won't break it off. My mom and her boyfriend abused me and my two younger siblings, brother and sister, when we were very young. I was the oldest. At age 5 at the time of my brother's first birthday, when I noticed something wasn't right, but at 5 I didn't really understand what was going on, and I thought abuse was normal. Until one day, a few days after my brother's birthday, she told me my brother was sick and that she he needed to go to the hospital. I didn't think much about it and said my goodbyes. As my mom dropped me off at my aunt's house on the way to the hospital, I arrived at my aunt's house. She gave me a bath, and me and my cousins played and watched television until it turned dark. Then something went wrong. We heard a knock on the door. I heard, and started after the door. Thinking my mom was here with my baby brother, I was thinking he was okay and everything was fine. My aunt opened the door, and started to cry. I tried to piece it all together before I realized there were two tall men at the door, police officers. They picked me up and told me I had to go away. I remember screaming for my aunt and I didn't get to say goodbye. At the time I didn't understand what was happening at all. I even thought maybe they were picking me up and taking me to my mother. We arrive at a place I cannot remember much about, where they fed me and took care of me that night until the sun came up. After I had woken up, it was off to another location. They were taking me to a foster home. I was living with a large family I didn't know, and it was all too scary for me. I stayed there for a few weeks until I was moved somewhere else. There I waited in a room when I saw somebody I knew. My grandparents and my sister. But my brother wasn't there. I began to worry that he was still sick. I got so excited still. And even more so learning that they were taking me home. That's when they began to explain to me where I was and why all of this had happened. All the abuse and neglect was too much for him. He wasn't sick. He was dying. And the reason why I was taken away was simply because my mother and her boyfriend was charged for abusing us and causing him to pass away. All this didn't really faze me at the time, since I was still just a child. But after the years I started to blame myself for not being able to do anything about it. Even though I was so young and couldn't possibly do so. Every year, on his birthday, I go to where he was buried and put a flower on his grave. My aunt told me he loved yellow. So I always make sure to get yellow flowers. And maybe a small toy I think he would have liked. And sometimes I wonder if he's up there, looking down on me. And likes the fact that I still visit him every year.